When a sound wave travels through a real room, it emanates out from the source three-dimensionally, encountering multiple surfaces and room boundaries. The result is a buildup of thousands of reflections in the room, creating reverberation, or ambience, which we're all familiar with, of course. When the quality of the reverb is good, it enhances and supports the music, adding richness and depth. But the close miking and overdubbing techniques we routinely use to maintain control over individual tracks for mixing don't capture much, if any, of this beneficial room tone. So we end up adding it back in later in the mix. Sometimes, dedicated extra room mics are used to capture the actual sound of the recording space. But more often, artificial reverb processors are employed. They typically simulate reverb by building up a characteristic pattern of digital delays to simulate the natural reflections in a room, and many offer a wide range of controls to sculpt the quality of this simulated reverb. Over the years, there have been a lot of different approaches to creating and adding artificial reverb to recordings. Reverb chambers, or actual separate rooms, empty, except for a speaker and microphones pointing away from each other. A separate mix of the tracks needing reverb was sent from the control room mixer via aux sends and tie lines to the speaker in the chamber. The natural reverb that resulted was captured by the mics and returned to the mix where it was blended in with the dry tracks. Later on, mechanical reverb devices were created. Plate reverbs consisted of a flexible metal plate with a transducer and contact mics attached. As with the chamber, sound was sent to the transducer, which got the plate vibrating, creating a tight reverb-like sound. This was picked up by the contact mics and returned to the mix. Spring reverbs took a similar approach, but with tension springs taking the place of the metal plate. These were mainly used in guitar amps, where they're still commonly found. In the digital era, hardware reverbs from companies like Lexicon and AMC simulated reverb from multiple digital delays, like I described a minute ago. And nowadays, that's mainly the domain of reverb plugins. There are a few different types of reverb plugins, but the most widely used ones nowadays are algorithmic reverbs and convolution reverbs. Algorithmic reverbs are the traditional digital reverbs that simulate reverb from multiple digital delays with various controls to fine-tune the simulated reverb sound. Convolution reverbs are sampling reverbs. They use digital recordings, samples, of real spaces and impose them on the audio via a mathematical process called convolution. Since the reverb quality of a sampled room is what it is, there are fewer controls, but the quality is not only potentially more realistic, but also specific to an actual, desirable, real space. I'll go over both algorithmic reverbs and convolution reverbs, but since reverbs are hooked up differently than the EQ and dynamics processors covered in the earlier course, I want to first go over the method for hooking up a reverb in a typical mix situation.